Now we're recording. We're, yeah. Spontaneity is our middle name. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? I'm <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. I decided this morning I was going to take Eric Lothholm's advice. I, I didn't. Uh, I've heard this from, I, I think Kamal Ravikant was the first place I heard this, but he, Kamal wrote a book called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. Oh, and he has four that. suggestions in there, and, and uh, the two I've been practicing this morning was one's mirror work. So you mm. look at the mirror. So I'm looking at like in in Zoom, I'm seeing myself. And I say, yeah, James, I I love you, and Sabal, I love, I love <laughs> I like you it. too. You know, so and you can do that in an actual mirror or on Zoom, or you can put your phone in selfie mode, and you can just say, "Looking good." Loving you, you know, so, so that, and then he also suggests doing an endless loop where you're, you're saying, I love you, or I'm loving this all, all the time. So that's sort of the default background, uh, chatter in your brain, right? Hmm. So you're programming yourself, you're programming yourself for loving kindness. Is it a new book? No, or it's, book no, it's been out. Um, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. It's, it's been out for. I want to say two, I want to say 2008 is my guess. Okay, that's good. I mean, yeah, that's definitely on point for me today. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so it's been on point, I guess, forever. But yeah, the on my radar, my focus just now. I like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, just 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 be. You just make the decision. You make the conscious decision. The conscious decision that you're going to consciously create loving kindness in your life. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. what I, what yeah. I was hearing for what you were saying was a lot of self-love, self-appreciation yeah, yep. and, um, love, like, um, what's her name? She's in our group. She say that loving kindness actually is the operating system of love, unconditional love. Oh, yeah. So it's unconditional true. love is how you, it's our set. It's how you, it's what you fear yeah, towards yeah, yourself yeah. and toward others. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the loving kindness is love in action is when you're expressing it mm -hmm. it's the gentleness yeah. and the kindness or or, or as uh, steve says and i think he got this probably from uh the way of mastery or a course in miracles or something like that uh, uh self-love is the ultimate in spiritual practice yeah i love yeah. that he said that yeah. he said as a possibility self-love is the highest form of spirituality yes yes I like it. Yeah. yeah because because when you love yourself everything else works in your life you can you know there is this verse in the bible that says um it's actually one of the second commandment you know the first one is to love your the lord the lord your god with all your heart mind yep. soul and yep. strength and yep. the second one is love your neighbor as yourself yep. and there is a debate and my uh, take on it is that i can only love others at the extent that i love myself exactly exactly because it says right. love others as love self but some would say that it's about selfless love. It's not for you, it's for other. I'm like, if you consider yourself as your neighbor, <laughs> why would you love others and not yourself? Well, well, well right, and, and thinking about that, considering yourself as your neighbor, isn't that what we're talking about a lot? You're like, your neighbors with your awareness of yourself, right? So that's what I think. That, that makes sense. Like, like you're the loving observer <laughs> and, and the, your neighbor inside your head is who you're observing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that it's Christianity uh, and I'm going to, you know, call it this way. It's a lot about um, the dying to self. It's a lot about sacrificing yourself because it said that Jesus, you know, he loved us to the point of death, death on the cross. Mm -hmm. And for me, if we had to, if we have to do something, it's just, it's like Jesus's death wasn't enough. Like I believe in Jesus mm -hmm. and I believe that his death took it all. And it says in the Bible, it's finished. Yeah. So I think we don't have to <laughs> carry, you know, beating ourselves up. And we can just love ourselves and the overflow of our love is going to be on others. So that's yeah, the way yeah, I there, see There you go. Yeah, that, that's... The that's more I love myself, I yes. and lately I've been loving myself so much more yeah. because for years I was self-suppressing and yeah. now I am in this stage where I love myself more than anything yeah. else. 
And yeah. because I love myself so much, oh my goodness, the ripple is on everyone. My kids, yes. my children tell me, mom, you're so kind, you're love. So I see transformation. I've experienced both, you know, forgetting yeah. about forgetting myself and kind of being um, tired, sometimes resentful and, you know, not mm -hmm. a lot of joy in my heart mm -hmm. and loving myself and being so, uh, you know, having so much self-care for myself and so much love for myself yes. that I can just, the only thing that I can do is to love others. So yeah, right. Yeah. Right. It just, it just spills, spills <laughs> That's a lived right. experience. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite amazing. It's quite, it's quite astounding. It's lived experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say that for me, uh, God and all of those things is lived experience, right? I can't, I don't know your experience, but I do know mine. So my mm -hmm. reference. Mm -hmm. My point of point of reference is going to be my experience, and I'm not yes. going to question yours. I am not going to doubt yours because it's you. It's it's yeah. And there's no different. there's no way you can know anyway. Yeah, there's exactly. no way you can know what another's experience is. You can only, I think, assume. Um, excuse me. Assume that some parts of it are going to be similar because we all have similar brains, right? <laughs> we all we all have the, the same biocomputer up here yeah that so we were, we're wonderful and same. uniquely made we yeah. were uniquely made yeah. we're the same without being the same at all we are not the right. same at all you james right. and me yep. Yep. and yep. we do have maybe the same number of cells and you know but we're completely different that's yep. a mystery that's a beauty yeah. and uh, the the amazingness of the yep. way we were created yep yeah like like we were saying yesterday the the you that is Sabelle is unique amongst all of the billions and trillions of stars and galaxies out there. There's only one, right? There's, yeah. there's only one and that, that's, yeah. and every, everything, it's almost as if the universe, all 13.8 billion years of evolution led to this point. Yeah. And I led say that God created us like, just perfectly that's yeah. his amazingness yeah. Yeah, i love that yeah. you say creation you say galaxy universe and i say creation and i think it's also show that we don't necessarily believe the same thing spiritually but right. we're completely aligned and loving towards one another and understanding of one yes. another yep. and respect for respecting one another so yep. for me that's a, that's a, that's a beauty you know yep. that's, um, yep. That's fantastic. Yep. But I do firmly believe in what I believe in. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do, well, I don't know if we need to get into it here, but I'm curious, do you, do you believe in uh, Christ as a person and God as an actual person? I believe or... in the triune God. Okay. God, one in, one, one in three, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, mm -hmm. and Jesus, Jesus Christ is the Son. So three mm -hmm. in one. I believe in the triune, yes. Mm -hmm. but yeah maybe yeah maybe we leave it there <laughs> yeah we, we can i mean we could we could certainly have a, a much more involved conversation about uh about that and and i could talk about how maybe my picture of christ like you know the picture i would see on on the wall in, in the church and that we had all over our home is maybe not the same picture that somebody else mm -hmm. would see what i love what somebody said to me and I, I that made me think a lot and he said <clears throat> where he finds our unity is in the spirit mm -hmm. because um, we all believe in the spirit of God and the bible also said that um, you know Jesus when he was living he said he was going to send someone the spirit the helper you know and he would be he would dwell in us and then he would lead us into all truth mm -hmm. so yeah, I would say that the spirit is my um, my guide. So the, so the spirit, um, and uh, I would call it the super consciousness of the universe. So what whatever whatever is pouring through, whatever is informing me that's outside of me through through my I'm going to use the chakra term yeah you know, through my crown chakra right. So so that is the the super conscious spirit of of the universe, and that would be likened unto I, I think the holy spirit in in christianity at least in my understanding in my understanding you know what spirit. i did the way because i wasn't born a christian i became a christian and the way i became a christian is through something called the alpha course and it was uh 10 or 12 
evenings uh -huh. to discuss about the foundation, found, foundation the found, le fondement, the foundations of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And it does uh, break it all down. And I, I took that because I was skeptical. I was like the religion I was born into was like, you don't quit that religion. It's the truth, it's everything. And mm -hmm. I went through the Alpha course and there was, there was no doubt for me that Jesus Christ was Lord. And so mm -hmm. I gave my life to Christ. And I think it's an, an amazing um, class for people who are skeptical and want to understand more. And even you, I recommend you take it if you mm -hmm. could at some point, because you will have the opportunity to discuss why you think that it's not true right and yeah. it's very open and you know some come to christ after that and some are even more firm in their atheism or something else um so i think that's the best thing that i've seen yeah to discuss uh whether christ is lord or not I, and so it's I, called alpha course Do, have you heard of it i no, i never heard of that so it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, so mention it, the Alpha Course. It's awesome. And there is also this book, um, The Case for Christ, that Lee Strober wrote. Have you heard of that book? I think I might Lee have seen Strober. it. Yeah. He was a journalist and he was very anti-Christ. And so he wanted to do, um, he was a journalist for criminal matters. And I think he would do uh, investigations mm -hmm. to prove this mm -hmm. or this. So he did, uh, he investigated Christ, Christianity, as if it was like a, a case, like a, a, a crime, and you know, with the evidences, you know, and and everything else. And at the end, he became a Christian. So, I mean, the opposite probably is true too. Probably you have some people who you know done similar things and ended up again being even firmer in their um, in whatever they believe in. But I think that it's interesting for everyone, you know, to go and uh, consider what you are refuting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I think of, of Christ as one of many teachers, but but his his influence looms large, <laughs> right? Because you you can't think of anything in in European civilization, you know, that, I'm thinking specifically for me of music, my knowledge of music, that's all informed by mm -hmm. Christ, it, it would if it weren't for the 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 Catholic Church, we would have no music. Yeah, as, as we understand and even that. we're in two, 2024 after yeah. Jesus Christ, so everything yeah. the whole world is after him. Yeah, and so that yeah depends. that influence that two thousand years of influence. Yeah, so I, for me it means something, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, so today was uh, today is my last day in Paris. Mm. I'm coming home soon, and. Um, you know, I do intermittent fasting and I uh -huh. ask you 10 minutes because that's my first meal. It was at 8.30 p.m. Really? So, really? So yeah. you, you went that, that long? So oh, usually I go till 2 or 3. Okay. I do uh, min my minimum is um, 18 hours, but I usually do 19 hours. I prefer that. And today I did, I don't know, 22 or maybe 24. Well, that's, I don't know. that's, that's, that's long. Mine, mine is usually, it's without fail, it's, it's about 16 hours. So okay. from 8, 8 p.m. to noon. noon Although yeah. it's almost, oh, actually, it's almost one right now and I haven't eaten yet. So I'm, I'm on to 17 good. hours right Push now. Push <laughs> it. I challenge you to, put, to, to start 18 because you will see an, a, a huge difference in your energy level. Mm, yeah. Like me, I, I don't eat before three. And my, my energy is at at its peak around one or two. So after, yeah. after not after 16. And then I just love it. And some and I force myself to eat something before I go and get the kids because I know that I won't have time to sit and eat. And yeah, but, you might be you might be at the point where there's there's some problems if if you go after that, as far as like a crash. No, I don't or, have like today I didn't crash. I was tired. I came home and I didn't actually you know, I was filled, fueled. I had energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 18, 18 is my 19, 19 hours is my sweet spot. I love it. Uh, if I can do 19, it's wonderful. Uh -huh. Do you have restrictions on your diet or guidelines that you follow on your diet? Not anymore. Um, okay. I used to, uh, like I don't eat 
I don't, I, um, milk like doesn't do good on me. So I don't drink milk. So I do, do you do cheese? Oh, I do cheese. It's fermented. Oh. And I do the, usually buy my cheese at Trader Joe's. We talk about that. <laughs> you know, European cheese. Yeah. And then I do the Kerrygold butter, like the yeah, yeah. grass fed butter from yeah. Ireland. Yeah. And yeah, but you no, know, I eat everything. I was, I used to be vegan and uh, I try to stay away of, you know, I don't like white flour. I do mm -hmm. like French baguettes mm -hmm. and the organic French baguette that I buy. Trader Joe's is white flour, but I eat that. I don't eat it every day. Um, yeah, I like real food. I eat real food. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm going to actually today, we'll probably I'm going to go out. I think Corvo and I are going to go out to lunch, or at least I'm going to go out to lunch at about two. So so that'll be 18 for me today, which is that's good. So do that and good. try 18 for a week and let me know if you see. Yeah, uh, I could try. I could almost try. It's almost like I could try 18 and make it one big meal and a snack maybe i that's what i do yeah. i do one meal one huge meal a day like i do the snack in the afternoon it could be two eggs and something or and then i have a big meal and no restriction i can even have dessert yeah. um yeah that's yeah. nice i love that i love it well thanks actually we're we're at time so i'm gonna okay i'm gonna cut the recording so thank you all for joining us so we're, we're getting better all. we're getting better <laughs> We're getting better, and I think I'll be in 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 Michigan when we speak tomorrow. Awesome! So. That's awesome. Later All right. Well, I'm day. wishing you. I mean, we're going to talk after this, but I mean, I'm wishing you the best, <laughs> the best journey. He's saying, so, "Okay, I'm so, leaving you, yeah. but I'm going to stay. You know, talk some yeah. more with her. Oh, well, yeah, because because <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later. Thank you all. You. Bye. All right. Yeah. Whoops.